Hey, what's going on everyone? Sam here with Light Pro Tackle. Guys, this video is gonna be a deep dive and an in-depth look into the drop shot. It may be a technique that you're familiar with, but guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, there are some things that you're probably missing on your drop shot that you need to fix. Uh, you know, maybe this is your first time and you're just learning how to tie up a drop shot or throw a drop shot. But guys, we're gonna go into all the details of the drop shot. This is gonna be a little longer video, so stay tuned. Guys, leave a like if you enjoy this video or learn something. We're gonna be going over a whole lot of cool stuff. But guys, buckle up, this is gonna be a fun one. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and hop right into it. We're gonna go from the ground up. So we're gonna go start at the weight. Now, if you don't know what a drop shot is, it's very simple. Uh, you've got uh, your line, you've got your weights, and you've got your hooks. So we're gonna go over uh, the weights, to the hooks, to the line, and then to some baits and the rod and reels that I like to use and match up with these actions and all, all the other cool stuff. So we're gonna start at the weights. Now there's really three different types of weights people will throw on their drop shots. These are the two we have in store here because honestly, um, the, the pencil style, the ones that are straight up and down, there's not a lot of um, you know width to them, I feel like they just don't give you any contact on the bottom. We're gonna go over the two weights that I really like to throw and the ones that I will keep in my tackle box 99 to 100% uh, of the time. They're in my tackle box all the time. Now, the pencil style, like I was, as I was saying, you'll probably wanna get away from those once you learn about these guys here. Now, you can throw lead or tungsten. Um, I prefer tungsten. It really sends a, that vibration through your line a whole lot easier since it's a little denser. Um, they are a little bit pricier, but guys, we're looking to upgrade the drop shot. Um, so if you're gonna go for the best results with your drop shot, you're gonna wanna throw a tungsten weight. Now the two ones that we have here are the teardrop and the round. I really like the teardrop a little more than the round, but the round will still give you that same great bottom, fuel, uh, bottom feel. The bottom of it is a little bit wider than those pencils. And why I love the teardrop so much is that it mixes the, the skinny pencil and the bowl. So it's great for punching into grass, not, well not punching, but you know, throwing it into taller grass and stuff. It's still thin enough to get down through there. And with the teardrop design coming out, it kind of pushes that grass away and it's really easy to fish through grass. Now again, this is also great to drag on rocks or any other bottom um, that you're gonna be dragging over and it's great through cover as well. So. Um, again, that teardrop design where it goes down and out, it's really gonna allow that weight to go through and push around different covers. So let's say you're fishing like a house foundation or a brush pile, it's gonna get through that a whole lot easier than something like the ball or the pencil. So again, um, we've got these Picassos in store and I can link everything down uh, that we're gonna be showing you today down in the description. So go check that out if you're interested, guys. Uh, free shipping for orders over $50. And we've got some amazing sales going on right now. We've got up to 40% off TFO rods. So go check those out um, if you go to the website as well. So we're gonna move on to the hooks here. Now, some major issues with a lot of hooks these days, even though they're labeled, you know, drop shot hooks or wacky hooks, you know, drop shot hooks need to be set apart um, depending on how their bend works, um, kind of where the, the gap between the point of the hook and the eye. So my two favorite ones we have in store um, are gonna be this guy right here. This is the Gamagatsu G Finesse um, tournament grade uh, wire hook. Comes in a green packaging, it's got Aaron Martin's face on it. Um, this guy here is ultra sharp and the great thing about these compared to a lot of other hooks is that when you hold your hook how it would be standing on the line here. And I'll, I'll rig up a drop shot here for y'all and you can see it exactly how it works, but the hook point is not in line with the eye. It's actually a little bit higher. So this is gonna improve your hookup ratio um, tenfold. I, I guarantee you a lot of the times when people are throwing um, you know, some other drop shot hooks, we're not gonna throw them under the bus right now, but some of the other drop shot hooks, when that hook point is in line with your eye, eye, uh, eye tie here, the fish can grab it sideways and you can pull it straight out of their mouth. It's not gonna lash onto anything, as well as you know, if they do eat it straight up and down, if your plastic is being covered just a little bit, that hook point is still gonna get into that fish's mouth and it improves your hookup ratio a ton. And these guys are gonna be used for nose hooking your bait and we'll get into that here in a second um, when we go over baits. 
Um, so nose hooking is one where you bring it through just a little tip of the plastic. Now the other one is gonna be a cover shot or almost like Texas rigging your, uh, your plastic on there. And the one that I would recommend that we have in store here is gonna be the owner cover shot. Um, this guy is a great hook. Now, I'll go back to the G finesse real quick. This is a size one and everything I'm rigging is gonna be for a size one hook. This is the cover shot. This is the size two. This is the, this is the number two hook. It's a little bit smaller. I prefer smaller hooks on my drop shots and the smaller hook is gonna give you the most amount of action on your baits. Now action is a huge thing. Um, sometimes uh, with a nose hook, you want a lot of action and you know, that nose hook allows that bait to free flow, do whatever it needs to do, how that bait was designed. Now with a cover shot, this is gonna be better for fishing through grass, through heavy brush piles, through timber, uh, something like that where you don't want an exposed hook. So this cover shot here, really great wire. Um, I, I really, really like these just because the thin wire on it, really strong as well. So bending these out isn't that much of an issue as long as you know how to fight that fish with your drag and your line. And we're gonna talk about line real quick here. I am a big Seaguar guy. So the two main lines that I'm gonna be using are gonna be 10 pounds or 15 pounds Seaguar Smackdown and Flash Green. Doesn't have to be flash green, it just helps you see that line on the water. So throwing a braid to a fluorocarbon leader is what I recommend no matter what. Just hands down, just fish the braid. You're gonna get so much more sensitivity. You're gonna cast a whole lot farther and a whole lot more accurate. So Seaguar Smackdown, you know, Power Pros, another good one, you know, as long as you're from that 10 to 15, I wouldn't even go to 20. Just that 10 to 15 range is gonna be your best performing for a drop shot. Now it's even the best performing for anything like a Neko rig or any other thing you're gonna be throwing on a spinning rod. Maybe except with the exception of heavier baits like a, uh, let's say Tim likes throwing the wobble head on a spinning rod, you know, then you can bump it up to 20. But if for finessier applications like the drop shot Neko rig and Wacky, that 10 to 15 pound line is gonna get the job done no matter what, it's gonna be give you the best results. And you know, there's a lot of debate on what line size you should throw for your leader. So we're gonna talk about this guy right here. This is Seaguar Tatsu. This isn't, this is their top of the line fluorocarbon that comes in this size spool. They also make a gold label line, which is leader specific that still uses the double structure technology in it. Now the double structure technology in the Seaguar Tatsu in gold label, what it is, it has a um, high density interior resin uh, that improves the tensile strength and sensitivity. And on the outside, it's gonna be a softer resin. So it's gonna be um, just a really solid core with a softer outside. So it's gonna be easier casting. You're gonna have a lot more casting distance with that as well. And it's really, really strong and abrasion resistant. So it is very similar to the Abrasex. However, with this double, double structure resin that they have on this, it, you know, it changes the game for your drop shots and anything that you wanna fish through heavier cover. So the Tatsu, it's a really great line. I usually run, I'll start at a 10 pound braided line. And if I'm fishing really heavy stuff, uh, let's say, you know, we're here in Texas, we're fishing around stumps, timber, just nasty trash piles. I will start at 12. Now I will go all the way down to six if I have to, you know, fishing Lake Texoma, the lake is super clear sometimes down South. If I want to target smallies, I will throw a six pound line, but generally 10 pound is a great all round um, line length that you can get away with. I know some people in high school, some of the high schoolers that I coach over at uh, Flyer Mound, guys, some of them are throwing like 15 to 17 on their drop shots and, you know, quickly realized this and had them change over to this 10 pound to 12 pounds, depending on what they're comfortable with, because it's just getting them a ton more bites. Um, the, the biggest thing is that heavier line doesn't flow as much. It can kink up. It keeps a lot of memory in it sometimes. So it's not um, conducive. It's not effective for fishing a drop shot. So that lighter line is gonna get you a whole lot more bites. The fish don't see it as much and it provides your bait a little more action and variability to fish it. So next up, we're gonna talk about, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the reel here. Uh, this guy right here is a great budget reel, about $100. This is the Tatula LT by Daiwa, solid reel. I'm not gonna go into, I'm not gonna bore you with 
um, all the great things about really, really expensive reels. As long as you've got a good drag, as long as it's a reliable reel, you're fine, guys. So this guy right here, only 100 bucks, Tatula LT. Um, I prefer a 2,500 size. A 3,000 is also a very good size. Um, I wouldn't go below the 25 or 2,000 really, and I wouldn't go above 3,000. So these are gonna be your main bass sizes from 2,000 to 3,000 um, for drop shots, necker rigs, um, Ned rigs, and other finesse applications. But make sure your drag's solid, you know, have it greased up, you know, make sure it's running right. Sometimes if it loses the grease in it, um, your, your uh, drag will lock down as that fish takes drag out or you're reeling. So make sure everything's good. You know, you shouldn't have an issue with a lot of the reels nowadays. Um, they're all pretty solid. I personally run the Stella, the Shimano Stella, um, and also some Stratic CI4 Pluses because honestly, who doesn't love a good Stratic? So there's the reel. You know, you're going to want to be throwing this on a spinning rod. This should be... Um, you know, this should be one of the basic things of the drop shot. So throw it on a spinning rod, spinning setup. Um, and we're gonna go over some rods here. I've got three different rods at three different price points that I really think are some of the great ones we have in store. So first up, we're gonna start at the lower tier here. This is the Abu Garcia Veritas. This guy comes in at 120. Um, this is the seven foot medium light. And you're gonna realize here when I talk about drop shots, I usually go really, really finesse. So this guy right here is a medium light action um, or medium light power. Uh, I would say more moderate action. So, you know, when you talk about um, power, that's going to be your medium light, medium light, medium heavy, heavy, and all that. When you talk about your action, that's how the rod performs as it bends. You know, how far does it bend down? Is that tip very snappy? You can see it's still going. It's got a big wavelength on it, so when you flick that tip there, it's still going. You know, it's not gonna snap directly back, and that's really what you want when you're fishing a drop shot or any finesse application with a smaller light wire hook. So this guy, again, seven foot medium light. It's a great rod. It's got good bend in it. The seven foot isn't my favorite length for a drop shot, but it definitely gets the job done if you're not going super in depth into it. Um, that seven foot is a good action to start with. Now, this guy right here, we just got these in store. If you watched the latest video over um, some of the new stuff that we got in store here, definitely watch that video if you haven't. This guy right here, I am super excited about it. This is the 13 Fishing Omen Gold Series. Um, and this guy here is basically an exact replica of the rod that I throw personally for my drop shots and finesse applications like Ned Riggs as well. This is the seven foot six medium light Omen Gold again. So seven foot, seven foot six medium light. It's got that same nice tapering action. It's not super fast. And that seven foot six rod length allows you to bring in a whole lot more line when you set the hook. And that medium light action runs all the way, almost all the way through the rod. It runs about halfway down and it starts to stiffen up. So that's where you get your power on the end of your hook set when you set the hook. And also um, it really allows you to just fight the fish. You know, if that fish, let's say you're fighting a smallmouth, we don't have a lot of smallmouth here in Texas where we're at, but let's say you're fighting a smallmouth. Let's say you're somewhere else in the country that has some really big smallmouth. The benefit to having that longer rod is when that fish makes a surge or when that fish makes a surge up or down, you have that rod length to catch up to that fish. Now, one of the biggest things when I was fighting my PB smallmouth at Lake Pickwick up at the tail race, that water is moving extremely fast and that fish can move 20 yards in a second. Now, when they do that, you wanna make sure you have a rod that can take that fish and as well as a good drag system. So that fish, this rod is gonna be able to flex wherever it needs to go when you're fighting that fish. So when it comes up and jumps, you can keep rearing back or keep reeling and you keep all that tension because it's all about tension when you fight these fish. You wanna make sure that your rod is bent the entire time. And if that fish makes a surge, let's say your rod's bent like this, it makes, makes a surge, you still have a lot of rod to keep tension on him. So this guy right here, this Omen Gold comes in at 130. This is a great, great price point for a good drop shot rod. It's still pretty light, it's very sensitive. It uses 36 ton Japanese blanks. Um, 
it just overall wonderful ride. Now we're going up into the $200 price range right here. I believe this Dobbins Sierra is a 180. So this is, this is another really good rod, very, very sensitive um, uh, that comes with these Dobbins rods. This is a seven foot, I believe this is a, it says light fast action. However, I would say it's more of a medium. So this is a seven foot light. We're gonna call it medium because you can see that backbone starts about a third of the way down the rod but it does have a nice tip, what, what you're looking for with a drop shot here. So this guy right here, very similar to the Abu Garcia uh, Veritas. Uh, the actions are almost identical and they're both seven foot. And I would say they are basically identical. You're just gonna get a little more sensitivity out, out of this Dobbins here. And we've got a couple more in store that if you wanna check those out, we've got a Daiwa Kage right at 190. Um, we've got some Daiwa Elite rods, got some TFO rods. We have some other 13 fishing rods. So go check all those out. And I might link some of those down in the, down in the description. So this is Dobbin Sierra. So now we're gonna move on to some of the baits. Now there's, you can throw, you can drop shot just about anything you want. It doesn't have to be a worm, doesn't have to be a swim bait, it can be a craw, it can be just about anything you want. I'm not gonna tell you, you, you can't drop shot something. However, when it comes to drop shots, you don't want something too heavy and you don't want something that floats too much. Because when you get a floating lure, that thing is just gonna look like this on the hook. And you don't want that. You want it to sit as horizontal as possible so something like this, this is the Robo Worm. It is a staple, the six inch straight tail. It is a staple for a drop shot. And I will normally nose hook these, but if I am fishing around timber or I'm fishing around a lot of brush, I'm gonna go ahead and do a cover shot hook because it's gonna be a little bit more effective um, fishing through brush and stuff like that. Now, another technique we're gonna talk about is something with a swim bait style drop shot. Now these are Kitek. Uh, easy shiners in the four inch and this is what i'm going to be throwing that size two hook or throwing with that size two hook it is just big enough or just small enough to fit this guy right here so um, i'm going to tie up a drop shot for y'all now i'm going to show you how to do it very simple uh, we're going to start with the hook so uh which one should i do I'll, we'll just do the nose hook here we're going to use that g finesse so when you're tying your drop shots you want to make sure you leave yourself plenty of room to tie your weight on. Now, when it comes to um, distance between your hook and your weight, I generally start at around one and a half to two foot. And that just seems to be the best way um, to throw the drop shot for me. So when you're tying it on, um, if you don't know what a Palomar knot is, go look that up really quickly, but I'm gonna just describe it here for you. So if this doesn't do it for you, go look it up. But a Palomar knot, so we're gonna go this way here. So. This is the end of my line over here, connected to my, connected to my uh, reel. I'm going to point the, the hook point facing to where that line's going. All right, so I'm gonna go down. And I'm gonna, just cause I'm right-handed, I'm gonna switch it over real quick. I'm gonna go down. Now I'm gonna go back through, but I pulled out about a foot and a half of line here. So my hook's here, foot and a half of line. I'm gonna go back into the eye of the hook. So now you've got two strands coming out of this eye with one loop on the other side. All right. So you've got your loop and you've got your two strands over here, all right? So instead of just going to tie it now with your hook in the middle, take your hook, slide it down the line so it's closer to your loop. So now I've got a lot of tag and a little loop, and you're gonna tie a small Palomar knot at the end of your loop there. So the reason that we're not gonna tie a Palomar knot with that hook in the middle is when you cinch this knot down, it's going to mess up your line. It's gonna put kinks in your line. It's not gonna look natural in the water. It's gonna reflect a little light, and that fish has a better chance of seeing it. So tying that knot in a small proximity to the hook right here is going to be better for you. Um, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. So next up, now that we have this here, a lot of people 
will fish it just like this. There's another step that you must do to improve your drop shots. So when you set the hook on a fish that just like this, you don't do the next step, that hook will turn sideways, your bait's gonna go sideways and it's not gonna look natural at all. So what you need to do is take the tag end of your line and you're gonna run it back through the top. So that way, there we go, your bait will stand straight up no matter what. So I'm gonna tighten this down and look at that. So my hook is standing perfectly where it needs to go straight up and down. Um, even if a fish gets a hold of it and starts thrashing around, that hook is gonna stay straight up right there. So next up, we're gonna tie the weight on. We're gonna go ahead and go with the uh, teardrop style here. And I prefer the ones that you tie on. I usually don't break off many weights at all, if any, and I'm just gonna either do a Palomar knot or you can do a little uh, clinch knot here very simple, however you wanna tie it on. If you've got the crimp one, do the crimp ones. It's up to you. I prefer the tie on. Uh, I don't break off a lot of stuff, so I don't worry about it too much. So we're gonna tie that weight on. Trim the tag end, don't trim the tag end. Um, the, the fish, you know, there's this much line here. So even if you don't trim the tag end, I don't think that fish is gonna notice too much or care too much. So I've got about a foot and three inches leader here uh, from the weight to the hook. So we're gonna take this over to the testing tank. We're gonna do some underwater footage. I'm gonna show you some of the benefits on how you fish these uh, lures here. So first off, um, we're gonna go with a nose hook variation and I'm gonna throw that swim bait on it. Now when I throw a swim bait, you know, usually I'm not just dead sticking this or barely twitching it. Usually I'm gonna go with a constant reel across the bottom. The nose hooks go straight in the nose and you don't want a lot of plastic sticking over that hook point. So you want it barely in the nose. And a lot of people are scared about this because they don't wanna lose their plastic. Guys, you're gonna lose your plastic more often than not. So definitely just get used to it. Don't be scared um, to just barely nose hook your stuff. So right here, this plastic's pretty heavy, but in the water, um, we're gonna show you here, uh, I'll just roll the footage over it. That swim bait is standing almost perfectly horizontal with the bottom, and that's what you want. And I'm gonna drag this across the bottom to get a little finesse swim bait. You know, it's gonna look like a little bait fish running away. Um, now we're gonna do one with a worm. So this guy's gonna substitute my robo worm. Uh, again, barely going into the nose of the plastic there and it's gonna sit, it's gonna wiggle around, and a lot of people, they put too much action on their worm. You know, they're shaking, 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 shaking a lot, and that worm is going crazy. That worm is gonna go whoosh, whoosh, like everywhere. You don't want that. You wanna make sure your worm um, generally just sits near the bottom and flows, kind of free, free flows, like a bluegill just sitting there, like a shad just sitting there waiting to get eaten. So a lot of people also will have too small of a weight. Now, I really do like fishing light, light drop shots for very finicky fish, like suspended fish, dropping it in front of their faces. However, if you're gonna effectively fish a drop shot near the bottom, you need to have a heavier enough weight. So starting at three eighths is a good starting place if you want to bottom fish or keep it on the bottom. So again, one of the benefits to the drop shot is it sits up off the bottom uh, however, to get a very, very cool action on this, you have to have a very uh, heavy enough weight to where you can let it sink down, it can flutter down, and then you barely bring it up and you twitch it. And it just sits there and goes up and down without moving your weight, kind of like this, but in slow motion because there's gravity. So we're gonna show you some of these footages, again, rolling over uh, through the tank. So guys, um, if you have any other questions, you know, definitely feel free to comment them down below. If you learned something, um, definitely leave a like, subscribe to the channel here, guys. We're almost at uh, 350 follower, or 350 subscribers on YouTube, so we're doing really well. Um, but I appreciate all the likes and support that we're getting. If you haven't checked out the lake reports or fishing reports 
on the website, go check those out as well. And we're starting to release a lot more of them out here on YouTube. So keep up with those, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. We appreciate all your support guys, but that is how to rig up a drop shot. That is how um, you should start fishing a drop shot and some other tips on how to improve your drop shot game. Again, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.